Kate Osho 21 day course for modern meditators. Day 18, sex, love, and meditation. Osho says that sex is a simple biological phenomenon and should not be given so much importance that its only significance is as an energy that it can be transformed into higher planes to become spiritual. The way to make it more spiritual, he says, is to make it a less serious affair. Sex is a subtle and complex subject and the very word is loaded due to our religious and cultural conditioning. Yet life itself is born out of sex. It permeates every aspect of our lives. Osho has said, unless you become attuned with something beyond mind, sex is going to remain there in some form or other. And if it's going to remain there, it is better that it remains natural, biological. Lust is the lowest form of sex energy. Love, the highest form. Unless your lust becomes love, you will be missing your goal. Sex is beautiful. Sex in itself is a natural rhythmic phenomenon. Life exists through sex. Sex is its medium. If you understand life, if you love life, you will know sex is sacred, holy. Then you live it, then you delight in it, and as naturally as it has come, it goes of its own accord. Osho's insight. Man has three layers, the body, the mind, and the soul. So whatsoever you do, you can do it you could do it in three ways. Either it can be just from the body, or it can be from the mind, or it can be from the soul. Whatsoever you do, any act of yours can have three qualities. Sex is love through the body. Romantic love is sex through the mind. Compassion is through the soul. But the energy is the same. Moving in a deeper way, its quality changes, but the energy is the same. If you live your love life only through the body, you live a very poor love life because you live very superficially. Sex just of the body is not even sex. It becomes sexuality. It becomes pornographic. It becomes a little obscene. It becomes a little brutal, ugly, because it has no depth in it. Then it is just a physical release of the energy. Maybe it helps you to become a little less tense, but just to become a little more relaxed, you are losing tremendous energy, tremendously valuable energy. If it can become love, you will not be losing it. In the same act, you will be gaining also. On the physical level, there is only loss. Sex is simply a loss of energy. Sex is a safety valve in the body. When the energy is too much and you don't know what to do with it, you throw it out. You feel relaxed because you are emptied of energy. A sort of rest comes because the restless energy is thrown out. But you are poorer than before. You are emptier than before. And again and again this will happen. Then your whole life will become just a routine of collecting energy by food, by breathing, by exercise, and then throwing it away. This looks absurd. First eat, breathe, exercise, create energy and then you are worried what to do with it, then throw it. This is meaningless, absurd. So sex becomes very soon meaningless. And a person who has known only sex of the body and has not known the deeper dimension of love becomes mechanical. His sex is just a repetition of the same act again and again and again. This is what happens in the West. People are going beyond sex, not towards love, not towards compassion, because that beyond is within. People are going beyond sex in a negative way. Sex is becoming absurd. They are finished with it. They are searching for something else. That's why drugs have become so important. Sex is finished. That was the oldest drug, the natural LSD. Now it is finished and people don't know what to do now. The natural drug is no more appealing. They've had enough of it. So chemicals, LSD, marijuana, psilocybin and other things are becoming more important. In the West, it is impossible now to prevent people from drugs. Unless sex starts becoming deeper and is transformed into love, there is no way. People will have to go towards drugs helplessly. Even if they are reluctant, they will have to go because the old drug of sex is finished. It's not finished because it was futile. It's finished because people lived only on the superficial level. They never penetrated into the mystery of it. 
At the most, people know something about what they call romantic love. That, too, is not love. That is repressed sex. When you don't have the possibility of making a sexual contact, that repressed energy becomes romance. Then that repressed energy starts becoming cerebral. It starts moving into the head. When sex moves from the genital organs towards the head, it becomes romance. Romantic love is not really love. It is pseudo. It's a false coin. It is again the same sex, but the opportunity was not there. In the past ages, people lived very much in the romantic love because sex was not so easy. It was very difficult. The society created so many obstacles. Sex was so difficult that people had to repress it. That repressed energy would start moving into their heads, would become poetry, painting, and romance, and they would have dreams, beautiful dreams. In the West, it has disappeared because sex has become available. Thanks to Freud, there has been a great revolution in the West. The revolution has dropped all those barriers and inhibitions and repressions of sex energy. Now sex is easily available. There's no problem about it. It is so much available, more than you need, that has created a problem. Romantic love has disappeared. Now in the West, no romantic poetry is being written. Who will write romantic poetry? Sex is so easily available in the market. Who will think about it? There is no need to think about it. And there was uh, this thing called No Not November. Um, and and it was, it, they came up with it because of uh, studies done about what happens with pornography. Uh, how, you know, men are, the, the pornography wires the brain differently. You can look into that. It's a whole big thing. <clears throat> it's very interesting. I think it's interesting. Anyway, romantic love is the other side of the physical sex, the repressed side. It is not love. Both are ill. What you call sex, sexuality, and romantic love, both are ill states of affairs. When body and mind meet, there is love. Love is healthy. In sexuality, only body is there. In romantic love, only head is there. Both are partial. In love, body and mind meet. You become a unity, more of a unity. You love the person, and sex comes just as a shadow to it. It is not vice versa. You love the person so much, your energies meet with the person so deeply. You feel so good by the other's presence. The other's presence is so fulfilling. It completes you. Love comes as a shadow to it. And... The Matrix, the, sec, the uh, Reloaded, the Matrix Reloaded, there's a sex scene with uh, Neo and um, Trinity, and and that is like what he's talking about, like where it's it's a completing thing. Anyway, just let me throw that out there because there aren't many good scenes to explain this, and that, that was a really good one. Sex is not the center. Love is the center. Sex becomes a periphery. Yes, sometimes you would like to meet on the physical plane also, but there is no hankering for it. It is not an obsession. It's just a sharing of energy. The basic thing is deep. The periphery is good. With the center, the periphery is good. Without the center, it becomes sexuality. Without the periphery, if it, on, if it is only in the center, it becomes romantic love. When the periphery and the center are both together, there's a togetherness of body and mind. It is not only that you desire the other's body, but you desire the other's being. Then there is love. Love is healthy. Sexuality and romantic love are ill, unhealthy. They are sort of neuroses because they create a split in you. Love is a harmony. It is not only the body of the other, but his very being, his very presence that is loved. You don't use the other person as a means for release. You love the person. He is not or she is not a means, but an end unto herself or unto himself. Love is healthy. And there's another depth still left, which I call compassion. When body, mind, and soul meet, then you have become a great unity. You have become a trinity. You have become trimurti. Then all that is in you, from the most superficial to the deepest depth is in a meeting. 
Your soul also is part of your love. Of course, compassion is possible only through deep meditation. I had a client yesterday and um, and his guides had me channel um, for him. You are not, I am not this, I am not this. Because um, when, when you show up in a relationship with ego, uh, we don't want to be used or abused or whatever, we, we don't show up. We don't want to be vulnerable. So our ego tells us who we are, gives us an image, an idea of who we are. And then um, we show up with, um, <laughs> we show up with idea of who we are. And so by saying, I'm not this, I'm not this to what we see. And um, in the Tao, the Tao that can be named is not the true Tao. So the Tao that can be spoken, written, named is not the true Tao. The true Tao is a flow. It's an energy flow. And you can't talk about what it is. You can only talk about what it is not. And through talking about what it is not, then you feel into what it is. Okay? So by talking about what it's not, over and over and over, <laughs> like you back into what it actually is. So you use the no's, the no energy, the no no, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. And you back into the true Tao. You could think of it as giving up. And what was really cool was this, my client, he's always trying, trying with the mind. He's, uh, another thing that he said, ah, you know what I really like last time you I channeled for him. Um, intellectuals are so, they think they're so right that they stand in front of the people with the guns because they're so sure they're so right intellectuals stand in front of the people with the guns but the intelligent people stand behind the people with the guns but anyway in his trying okay his guide had me take him through imagine because he was laying down you're about you're gonna die in three minutes and so to feel what it feels like, I'm dying in three minutes. There's nothing to do. You're not going to get up and make yourself a sandwich. You know, you're not even going to go pee. If you have to go pee, you're going to be like, I'm just going to lay here and feel what the last three minutes of my life is like. And if you could live your whole life with that energy of being, you know, if you have three minutes left, there's nothing to do. Three minutes. And there's like a, such a freedom to that. Three minutes, you know? Um, okay. All right. So compassion. When body, mind, and soul meet, then you have become a great unity. You become a trinity. You become trimurti. Then all that's in you from the most superficial to the deepest depth is a meeting. Your soul is also part of your love. Of course, compassion is possible only through deep meditation. Sexuality is possible without any understanding, without any meditation. Love is possible only with understanding. Compassion is possible only with understanding and meditation. Understanding and awareness. Not only do you understand and respect the other person, but you have come to your deepest core of being. Seeing your own deepest core you have become capable of seeing the deepest core in the other also. So you've come to your deepest core where you don't need to have your image anymore. You don't need to hold your image anymore. So I am not this. I'm not this image. You come to your own deepest core. You allow yourself to show up naked, like naked body, naked. Um, you're not hiding. Okay. So when you show up in your own deepest core, then you could see the deepest core in the other person. So as it is inside, so it is outside and vice versa. Now the other does not exist as a body or a mind. The other exists as a soul and souls are not separate. Your soul and my soul are one. The third stage I call holy because it consists of the whole. That is possible only if you make individual efforts. 
Meditation will lead you to compassion. Buddha has said, if you meditate, compassion will arise automatically. Because when you meditate, you start to feel more and more connected to all that is. You calm down. It, it gives you compassion, love plus understanding. The meditation is called transforming sexual energy. Each thing has its own right time, says Osho. Each thing has to be done in its moment. While young, don't be afraid of love. If you're afraid of love while young, in old age, you will become obsessed. And then it will be difficult to move deeply in love, and the mind will be obsessed. Sex is chemical. It releases certain hormones in your body. It gives you a certain illusory euphoria. It gives you a few moments when you feel at the top of the world. And he cautions, if you remain confined to sex, then you will simply waste your energy. By and by, the energy will ooze out of you and you will remain just a dead shell. So I'm going to read the technique very quickly and then they're going to modify it for us. When the sex desire arises, close your eyes and be meditative. Move downward to the sex center where you're feeling the thrill, the vibration, the kick. Move there and just be a silent onlooker. Witness it. Don't condemn it. The moment you condemn, you've gone far away from it. And don't enjoy it because the moment you enjoy, you are unconscious. Just be alert, watchful like a lamp burning in a dark night. Just take your consciousness there, unflickering, unwavering. You see what is happening at the sex center. What is this energy? So we're going to basically heal your second chakra. So before I finish reading this, Come into the space where you are. Feel your contact points on your chair if you aren't already. Some of you already are. Okay. Grow a root from your... Grow a root from your second chakra, which is... Um, just figure... Oh, just use your core two inches below your belly button, two inches inside. You can imagine a red moving ball. Or, I mean, orange, sorry. First chakra is red. Second chakra is orange. You just imagine like an orange moving ball, moving. And just reach down, connect to Mother Earth. Okay, because Mother Earth supports life. Second chakra is creativity and sexual uh, power and expression. So we're gonna heal the second chakra today, but we're not gonna ignore the first chakra. Okay, because you want your, you want a nice, Pyramid. So you want a nice, healthy, balanced first chakra and then the second chakra. All the way up to the top of the pyramid is third eye. That, um, that image has been usurped by um, groups that do the opposite of what I do. <laughs> just so you know, just so you don't think I'm doing that. Uh, anyway. So we're not going to ignore the first chakra. We're going to clean and clear the first as we heal the second. So the intention is set to cleanse and heal the first chakra as we focus and concentrate on healing the second chakra. All right, so you got a nice root from your second chakra wrapping around Mother Earth. Just see it. It doesn't have to be difficult. And now reach up from there, from your second chakra. You're going to ground to heaven, move the energy up through your channel, through the center of the top of your head and just reach up and connect to heaven, whatever heaven means to you. The highest, holiest source creator energy or God and see yourself in the center of a big white spotlight. Good. Oh, the highest, holiest source creator energy. Good. Relax. Eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Shoulders back and down. Keep grounding to earth and grounding to heaven. From your second chakra setting the intention to heal your second chakra completely as well as the first that is the focus as you heal your second chakra your creativity will increase so put your hands over your heart and make a promise to yourself i promise to engage in creative projects that you show me so you may have creativity 
things are starting to come up. Okay, so now I'll finish reading. Just keep breathing with your grounding to earth and heaven. Watch the fact that an energy is arising near the sex center. There's a thrill. Watch it. You will feel a totally new quality of energy. You will see it is rising upward. It's finding a path inside you. And the moment it starts rising upward, you will feel a coolness falling on you, a silence surrounding you, a grace, a beatitude, a benediction, a blessing all around you. It is no longer like a thorn, painful. It no longer hurts. It is very soothing, like a balm. And the more you remain aware, the higher it will go. It can even rise up to the heart, which is not very difficult. Difficult, but not very difficult. If you remain alert, you will see it has come to the heart. When it comes to the heart, you will know for the first time what love is. So see the energy arising from your second chakra, all around your second chakra, rising up. I'm seeing it as like a cool flame. Rising up reaching your heart good and just breathe in and out through your heart now pretend that you're breathing in and out through your heart nice long slow breaths and just notice that you're still safe so you allow the energy from the second chakra little more, little more to surround your heart. Good. Relax your eyes, jaw, shoulders. Feel the energy from the second chakra getting stronger now. This is your own second chakra. Good. There's worthiness clearing. So if you if your head needs to turn left, allow that. You're good. Allow your head to move around. Good. 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 Focusing in on your second chakra. Good. Relax your belly. Let your body move. Let your body move however it wants to move. Follow your guidance. Follow what the body wants to do. Allowing all the divine healing energy now to totally flood through your second chakra. As it cleanses and heals your second chakra, it becomes more orange, more lively. And the, the color orange maybe in multiple hues. So just allow it. Allow the light to heal your second chakra. Good. Good. Smiling face, shoulders back and down. Good. Allow the light to just completely cleanse and heal the second chakra. The hues of orange, maybe even some red, whatever it is. It's okay if you see yellow in there too. It's just self-esteem issues. Good, relax your hips. Let your hips fall open. Good, this is your second chakra. 
I allow my second chakra perfect healing now. And so it is. Good. And now see the cool flames from the second chakra. Cool flames moving up and reaching towards your heart. Good. My second chakra. My heart chakra. Good. This is no one coming in from the outside. You're completely safe. You're the center. You're in the center of the big spotlight of the highest, holiest source creator energy. There's multiple layers of safety, protection, and healing. Good. You just need to allow. I allow... my healed second chakra to reach my heart chakra. Good, it's all you. It's all you. There's no one from the outside. Good. Let the cool flames from your second chakra now embrace your heart chakra now. Good. Breathing away any fear, exhaling any fear you have. This is only you. Good. Good. Stretch if you need to. Someone needs to stretch. You can stretch your arms out. Stretch. Stretch your neck. Good. Go right back to it. Good. My second chakra embraces my heart chakra now cool flames. Now allow your heart to expand, focusing now on your heart. So focusing on your heart now, good. All your mind on your heart chakra. All your mind on your heart chakra. Healing, and clearing your heart chakra of any past traumas, from everywhere, from all people, from all everything. Good. Opening and clearing heart chakra. Good. Opening and clearing the heart chakra. I am safe in love. Good. I am safe in love. Relax. Eyes, jaw, shoulders, smiling face. Allow yourself to become vulnerable to yourself now. Good. Practice vulnerability with yourself. Good. Just drop everything. Let everything be as it is. Good. Be naked and vulnerable to yourself. Good. Relax. Eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Smiling face now. Using your breath to heal your own heart chakra. Good. Allowing the energy and the cool white flames of your second chakra to embrace your heart. Good. Connect them in the healthiest way. Good. Relax your shoulders, smiling face. Think about this, whatever you received today, whatever you, however you saw it, just think about it, remember it often during the day, just remember it. I can be vulnerable to myself, that's all. Only vulnerable to myself, good. The more vulnerable to yourself that you can be, because I am not this. The more you can allow yourself to be vulnerable to yourself, and as we heal and clear your third eye, you will just know 
if there becomes another person for you to be vulnerable to, you will be ready. But you will also know when not to be, who not to be vulnerable with. Good, relax. Eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Feel how much bigger you are now. Energetically healing your second chakra and allowing it to embrace your heart chakra. The self-esteem chakra is in between those two. And self-esteem becomes irrelevant when you have your sexual power, creativity, connected with your heart, being vulnerable to yourself, having this relationship within yourself, good, and then knowing who or who not to share this with. You don't even need self-esteem. Becomes irrelevant. Because self-esteem is a function of the ego building the image, and I am not this. So your third chakra gets healed. It becomes empty, becomes healed as you work on your second chakra and heal it in combination with your heart chakra. So keep your heart chakra on your mind for the rest of the day. Focus on your heart chakra. Feel it loved and protected and embraced by your second chakra. However you saw it, I saw white cool flames. Just imagine that energy of the second chakra fully healed, protecting your heart chakra, allowing yourself to be vulnerable to yourself. Good. And I... That's all of the time I'm supposed to take from you today. So I love you. Have a great day.